Hello everyone, in this video we're going to talk about a congruence theorem for triangles in geometry called the side angle side or SAS congruence theorem. The SAS theorem says if two sides and the included angle of one triangle are congruent to two sides and the included angle of a second triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. Okay, so we need two sides that are congruent and we need the angle that is in between those two sides. That's what the included angle means. So we have an example here, it says, uh, or we have a triangle ABC and we have triangle DEF. So on the left it says if side AB is congruent to side DE. So AB and DE, right? So we have this congruence tick mark here saying those two sides are congruent. And then if our angles are congruent, so angle A and angle D, and then side AC and side DF. Okay, so notice how we have like side angle side, right? How the angle is in between the two sides that are congruent. That is where we have this SAS example. So since we have that, we can say that the two triangles are congruent, okay? So let's look at an example where we actually prove that this congruence theorem works. So we are given a, tri a triangle, uh, triangle ACD, um, but we have a segment there, CB, that is splitting our the base of our triangle into two uh, parts. So we can have two different triangles here triangle ABC and triangle DBC. So it tells us that we are given that point B is the midpoint of segment AD and angle ABC and angle DBC are right angles. So they want us to prove that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DBC. So whenever we write a two column proof, we're gonna start off with what is given to us. So my first statement, I'm gonna say B is the midpoint of AD. Okay, and I'm gonna say number one, my number one reason for that is that was given information, okay? So now when you think about what does midpoint mean? Midpoint means that this point B is going to bisect segment AD. So now it's gonna create two congruent segments. So now I can say segment AB is congruent to segment BD. And basically my reason for that is just the definition of a midpoint. So the definition of midpoint, okay? All right, so now we have two sides that are congruent. So now let's look at the angle that has been given to us, or the two angles. So we know from the given information, angle ABC and angle DBC are right angles, okay? And that was given to us in the wording at the top and also in our diagram with the right angle boxes. Okay, so now statement number four, we can say that those two angles are equal to each other. So angle ABC equals angle DBC. And our reason for that is right angles congruence theorem. So right angles theorem, right? We learned that um, in chapter two. Okay, and messed up my number again. This would be number four, right? Okay, so now my fifth reason that I can say, since we have this side of the triangle, basically that side is being shared by the two triangles that we have, so it has to be the same length. We have a property for that, so we can say segment BC is congruent to itself, and we call that the reflexive property. Okay, and so now, we have all of our information that we need, right? We have proved a side here, right? Side AB is congruent to side BD. We have proved an angle right there. The two angles are congruent. And we have proved the third side of the, by using the reflexive property. Okay, so now we can say triangle. Actually, let's add it down here. Reason number six, we can say triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DBC. And our reason would be the SAS congruence theorem, okay? And that is the side angle side congruence theorem.